The station's robotic crew member, Robonauts, getting some upgrades today. Here to tell us more about what's taking place, where we've come from, and where we're going with the first humanoid robot in space, uh, Dr. Ron Diffler, uh, the principal investigator and the project manager for Robonaut 2. Ron, first off, thanks so much for joining me today. And if you could set the stage a little bit, so Robonaut's been on board for a few years. What What's the work that's been going on? What have you guys been doing with, with it on board? Well, it's my pleasure to be here today, Dan. Um, since we've had the robot on space station, after we completed our checkouts, the first thing we did was we said hello to the world mm -hmm. using American Sign Language, moved on for some um, crew interaction, shaking hands with Commander Dan Bolden at uh, Dan um, Burbank at the mm -hmm. time. Um, since then, we've been using the uh, task board and trying out many of the different things that we had previously tested on the ground, working with knobs and switches, buttons, um, various other interfaces. Um, most recently, we've moved on to working with tools and soft goods. Soft goods being very important, especially when the robot's ultimate goal is to work um, EVA. Working with soft goods are things you find throughout the space station. So soft and goods, things like, like space covers, blankets, okay. et cetera. Et cetera. Um, our most recent activity was working with teleoperation. That is, one of the astronauts, Tom Marshburn, put mm -hmm. on a collection of virtual reality gear and controlled the robot inside the station, simulating it as if we were outside. And he caught our first free-floating object, which was very exciting to us. So kind of like the world's coolest video game taking place in space right now. Absolutely. So, and... Obviously, Robonaut uh, created to be kind of a, another set of helping hands to the astronauts on board the station. And it needs more than just hands, it needs some legs too. So you guys have been developing these climbing legs for the robot. Absolutely. Um, you can only do so much if you're fixed on a stanchion, which is what we've been on for the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, with the addition of legs, we'll be able to go mobile. Matter of fact, here you can see in the video, um, this is our ground unit for Robonaut, actually our certification ground unit. Mm -hmm. And there it is, um, practicing climbing. And in this case, we took a truss system, put it on our air bearing floor, which is kind of like an air hockey table, mm -hmm. except in reverse, the, um, the whatever's floating on top of it's emitting a thin layer of air so it can float. We are using our grippers to then move that back and forth, simulating as if the actual robot works climbing through the station. And we've had very good results with that, as you can even see during this video. So they definitely don't look like traditional legs. So while the upper body does have a lot of resemblance to a human, because we do a lot of human-like motions with the upper body, mm -hmm. performing human-like tasks, well, in space, you don't use your human legs the way you would use them on the ground. That's right. So we were not as... It, um, we were not, we didn't adhere to the human form when it didn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. In the case of space, you want legs that are going to give you more of a climbing capability than a walking capability. So they're longer legs with more um, degrees of freedom, greater flexibility for mm -hmm. us to be able to reach from one handrail to another and over maybe a little bit larger distances than you might normally expect. Okay, now the legs have been up there for a couple of months now, but we can't just throw them on, we have to get Robonaut ready first. So what are some of the upgrades that have been taking place and what are some of the upgrades that are taking place this week? So um, a few weeks ago, we finished the upgrades to the torso. Um, when Robonaut was originally built, we did not um, have legs in mind. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we had to go inside and increase and modify the infrastructure to support legs, support all the wiring. We also um, re replaced our computer system because now we have more joints to control, so mm -hmm. we need more computer power. Uh, we made all those changes. And actually, here you can also see an additional change we made on the robot, which was we upgraded the helmet. We learned on the ground that there were ways to improve our vision system by making modifications to the helmet. So we included that as part of the upgrades to Looks increase like you're our overall capability. Doing a little brain surgery That's on right. orbit there. That's right. There's astronaut Steve Swanson mm -hmm. making modifications to the helmet. So um, we upgraded the body. Uh, put all the all the uh, latch all the hooks we needed so that when we attach the legs we can connect everything together. Mm -hmm. um, here you see the legs. They were sent up, folded up, and they actually have handrails. Our, our protocol on space station is that one leg must always be engaged. Mm -hmm. No free floating robots on the, inside the space station. So you see two handrails that'll be used in part of the assembly process. So we will un uh, astronaut Steve Swanson will unfold the legs and then remove the, up the body from its stanchion and attach those to the top of the legs. Basically put the bottom half and the top half together to give us a full-size robot inside the space station. Okay. And I think we have some more images. Uh, so you mentioned it's been on a stanchion a lot, and I think we have another picture. Um, yeah. so, what, so what are we looking at right here? That's the interface 
at the top of the legs that will mate with a, a matching interface that we recently installed um, with the Torso upgrades. And the two can be put together. And you can actually see some guide pins there. And when it's all put together, it'll look just like that certification robot we have on the ground and be able to start moving between handrail to handrail, which is one of the ways we'll move on the inside of the space station. And it won't have to worry about those straps either. Cause it's That's right. You don't need the straps in space since you'll be able to, uh, there'll be no gravity and you'll be essentially weightless. So when are you guys expecting, when are you hoping to get the legs attached? Uh, currently we're doing some preparation work both today and tomorrow. Our goal is to attach the legs on Thursday and then button everything up on Friday. And then we'll do what we call a power soap. We just mm -hmm. turn on electronics and make sure everything is behaving the way we expect it to. Yep. And then once that's out of the way, first steps. When, when well, there'll be a couple of steps? more um, stages between now and first mm -hmm. steps. We have to be sure that all these things have been put together are checked out properly. So we'll have more or less the equivalent of stretching over the next two activities we have on Space Station. Mm -hmm. And then in the November, December time frame, we will take our first step and go from one of our handrails that we're currently mounted to to, a next, to the next handrail. And then just to close us out, Big picture, once Robonaut's mobile, what, what are you guys really hoping that it's going to be able to accomplish? Well, we have put the robot in the best laboratory anywhere mm -hmm. for preparing ourselves for eventual EVA activities, space walking, space climbing type of activities. So we're going to use the space station as a laboratory for climbing mm -hmm. and learn all about climbing inside the space station where we have the advantage as we're learning things, if some issues come up, the crew's there to help us. And as opposed to being on the outside of the station, where if you're learning things, there are a lot more consequences to yep. what's going on. So that'll be the great laboratory for us to develop our climbing capabilities so that when we have a robot on the outside of the space station, we're well prepared. All right. Well, exciting time for Robonaut on board the station, getting ready to get those legs on and not too distant future takes those first steps. Really exciting stuff. Dr. Ron Diffler again, project manager for Robonaut. Thanks so much for joining me today here inside the control room, giving us an update. We'll surely be following along. My pleasure, Dan. Thank you.